start. Before we start our today's meeting, let me first remind you all that this meeting is recorded. And also I want to remind you all of our community statement, which has the three uh, bullet points. We are all learning. Everyone has something to contribute and no one has all the answers. With that said, I want to give the stage to Aditya. He will be talking about combinatorial Nullstellensatz and he's doing this in honor of Professor Noga Allen. And from the side of us organizers, also happy birthday to you. And please, Aditya, take it away. Yeah, thank you for uh, this wonderful uh, conference. So um, it's a big honor to speak in, uh, in, in honor of Professor Noga Allen because uh, he has inspired me in many ways. Uh, his work is this communal news is my first ever research work I've ever studied, I ever, ever read and worked on. So it's, it, it's, it's a very, uh, very special thing to me. So, and I would also uh, uh, like to uh, wish him a very happy birthday. And essentially this cake is for, uh, is essentially um, dedicated to him. And this removal of the full of one piece of the cake is essentially shows that he, that we are just discussing a one small part of his work. He has done a lot of, contributed a lot of things in mathematics. So we are just taking up one small segment of his work and discussing it today. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so let's begin um, uh, this uh, talk. So, um, yeah, so the, the talk will be divided into five parts. Uh, one, I will be introducing some of the community new slants art. Uh, then there will be some examples of how to use it. And then the third in, uh, part will be discussing uh, how we can uh, get the results about additive com in additive combinatorics from uh, by using uh, this quantum neutral answers. And then uh, there are some extensions using Lagrange interpolation, for instance. And then finally, this is a big surprise for. Uh, so let's hold on till then, and we will see what uh, we get there. Okay, so um, uh, computer neutral answers essentially can be uh, was uh, uh, so so we have, we start with this elementary result that if we have a field F and if you have polynomial in this field, which has a degree T, uh, then uh, if we have a subset of F, which has is greater than T, then there exists some, some point which is not a zero of this polynomial. So in other words, it says that a polynomial of degree T can have a, at most T roots, T distinct roots. So if you take any set of size greater than T, then we find something which is not a root of the polynomial. This is a fairly easy to prove statement because, uh, and there are, there are many ways of proving it, but when we, but uh, the thing that um, becomes difficult is when we go to uh, polynomials with, um, uh, where they are, uh, I mean, in, uh, indeterminates. So a polynomial of indeterminates. So in that case, it becomes a bit difficult to, to, um, uh, to prove. So in fact, this result doesn't hold uh, as it is in case, in that case, we need some other conditions. Uh, and there comes uh, computer new students. So uh, suppose F is the field, and we have a uh, we have some uh, some polynomial uh, F uh, in with uh, on, in in the in the so it's a multi multivariate polynomial. Uh, and uh, suppose it has degree t one plus t two plus t n. And suppose that also uh, that we that the coefficient of a certain term x one to the power t one, x two to the power t two, x n to the power t n is non zero. Uh, then if we have sets S1 to Sn, which are subsets of this field F, satisfying uh, that cardinality of Si is greater than Ti for all i, then there exists some, uh, some tuple uh, in, this, in this Cartesian product. Uh, so X1 belongs to S1, X2 belongs to S2, and so on and so forth. Xn belongs to Sn, such that F of X1 to Xn is non-zero. And uh, this will have several important connections in combinatorics. So it essentially uh, gives us a way to connect uh, commentarial problems to uh, in in uh, in in uh, to translate problems in commentaries to problems about uh, so about uh, finding coefficients of person polynomials or, or dealing with or analyzing the a polynomial. So um, and uh, so this also this is also uh, very much related to uh, the new topic in, uh, in commentaries that is very useful these days called polynomial method. Uh, some of uh, some of the people here already know it and some I mean some have pioneered it. So. So yeah, so 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 it 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 was a sort of the one of the first few results uh, in in polynomial method that was uh, uh, devised, and it was, I think it was devised in 1990s by Professor Alon. So, 
Yeah, so let's see how... Can I interrupt you for a short question? Yes, sorry. Um, so if you can go back to the theorem um, with the conditions. I'm, because you said the degree is T1 plus plus Tn, and so okay. and you said the coefficient should be non-zero. Do you mean that all coefficients of the uh, monomials of highest degree are non-zero? So uh, no matter how I... I composite T1 up to Tn that these coefficients no. are non-zero? No, no, uh, it's like uh, we have some, uh, suppose we take some T1 to Tn, it, mm -hmm. it need not hold for all ways of, I mean, suppose the degree is D, and mm -hmm. uh, so, so and we have say D is uh, some uh, T prime 1 to plus T prime 2 and so on till T prime n, we, and suppose the coefficient of T prime x to the power, x1 to the power T prime 1, x2 to the power T prime 2, and x n to the power t prime and this term is zero. Uh, but suppose we have another way of writing that d as t1 to t n and that coefficient of x to the power t1, x2 to the power t2, uh, x n to the power t n is non-zero. Then this result holds. It doesn't say that all the ways of find or uh, I mean the all the highest degree terms in the polynomial do not have non-zero coefficient. But the okay. way pi comes in here is, is via this uh, the size of the set. So thank you. Yeah. That answers my question. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's see how this uh, thing can be used. So uh, there's one nice example, which was uh, taken from Russia 2007. Um, it was the Russian National Olympiad uh, 2007. And this was problem was proposed by Professor Fedor Petrov. And actually I did this, I, I, stud I studied this commentary news answer initially under Professor Petrov. So, yeah, so and, and this was one of the problems yeah, uh, he, uh, he actually gave me as a, Three to try after I knew that I, after I studied the result. So yeah, it's it's, it's a one line proof uh, using commentary and Newton's answer. So the let's see the problem. So the problem says that suppose n greater than this four is an even natural number, and suppose we have an n gone, uh, and we on each vertex we write two distinct numbers. So um, then the question asks that prove that uh, that we have to that we can erase one number off from each vertex, such that the numbers that are remaining uh, out of the remaining numbers no two adjacent vertices have the same uh, number written. So, uh, so the is we consider the point we, uh, so the idea of using conventional neutral answers is given a problem, we try to encode it in terms of polynomial, then we show that certain a certain coefficient is non-zero and that gives us all the profit. So um, we consider the polynomial fx1 to xn, which is defined by fx1 to x, uh, by x1 minus x2 times x2 minus x3 and so on and so forth, so xn minus x1. And it's easy to see that the coefficient of this term x1 to xn is two. Uh, so there, so, so you can see that it's easy because uh, here, if n is even, then one, 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 uh, one so there's a two contributions to this thing. One is when uh, we are take all the positive, uh, really, uh, all the coefficient, all the terms having the positive plus one coefficient that gives us uh, x one term x one to x n, and then again when we just multiply this negatively, uh, the, the terms having these negative coefficients, we get another pay, another uh, copy of this term. So the coefficient is two, and then using commutative neutral answers, the claim follows. Uh, this is because you uh, the by commutative neutral answers, we see that on each vertex. I mean, if if we if we consider SI to be the set of numbers in, on the ith vertex, then it says that uh, in this set S1 cross S2 cross up to Sn, there exists some tuple uh, S X1 X2 Xn such that the this uh, the vertices are distinct and uh, such that this polynomial is non-zero. And uh, saying this polynomial is non-zero is essentially saying as that the distinct uh, adjacent vertices have the distinct number because this is just the, all the terms are non-zero and. It's, it's, all right. Mm, uh, uh, a quick question. So uh, I think I understand um, how combinatorial Nishan's uh, demonstrates okay. that this is true. Why does it matter that the coefficient of x1 to xn is 2? Is it just non-zero is what you're looking for? But 2 uh, versus yeah. 1 is important? Okay. No, it's it's non-zero. I mean, here it's important that it's non-zero, but here it's easy to see that the coefficient is is two. Uh, mm -hmm. And here uh, we're and using the fact that even natural number, like it has right, to be a dot, 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 dot. Right. If it's odd, then the coefficient will be zero. 
as we can see, because there will be one copy of x1 to xn and another copy of x1 to xn will have a negative sign because uh, there are just n numbers getting multiplied for each the negative sign. So in the, for odd numbers, we indeed have a way to uh, to, to avoid uh, uh, forming, I mean, we have a way of way of arranging the numbers so that this conclusion doesn't hold. But in case of even, yeah, this is not. All right. So this was an easy example. Let's consider a more difficult problem. So this was this appeared in as a problem sixth problem in IMO 2010, uh, 2007. So the question is as follows: Say n is a natural number, and we consider this set S uh, to be the all the triples x y z such that x y z belong to the zero to n. And uh, excluding the point zero zero zero, uh, and these are this so this set has cardinality n plus one cube minus one, and uh, so we want to find out the, the smallest number of planes uh, such that the union of them contains this uh, this s but doesn't include the point zero zero zero, and uh, uh, so we first uh, claim that the answer is three n, uh, and uh, and it's easy to see that three n planes can be used so. The planes are just uh, considered this x uh, equals to one, x equals to two, and so on until x equals n. So this gives us n planes. Then there are y equals to one to y constants. So this means another n planes and z equals to one to n. So so we get three planes of uh, so using which we can do this. Uh, so um, and this doesn't include the points zero zero zero, okay? and they are or they include all the other points in S. So so three planes suffices. Let's show that uh, we cannot do it with less than three planes. So assume to the contrary that we can do the job with uh, k less than three n many planes. And suppose these planes are aix plus biy plus uh, cij plus di equals to zero, uh, where i belong i lies between one and k. Uh, so we can uh, define two uh, polynomials. The first one is ax by z to be uh, product of i equals to one to k aix plus biy plus cij plus di and dx by z to be uh, this product i equals one to n x minus i. I've is a deliberately written it in this form so that the co finding the coefficient becomes actually clear in front of us. So it's x minus i times product of y minus i times the product of z minus i. Uh, we see that the coefficient of x power n, y power n in z z power n in a is zero. And uh, this is essentially because we have k is less than three n. So any anything that has total power, the total degree three n cannot uh, have a non-zero coefficient in, in a x y z. Because just we are just multiplying k many terms and k is less than 3n. And the coefficient of x to the power n, y to the power n, z to the power n in B is 1. This is a, a element from this uh, thing. This, e from each of these terms, we get a coefficient of 1. So 3 ones multiply up to 1. All right. So now let's define another polynomial p x y z to be a x y z minus a 0 0 0 by b 0 0 0 b x y z. Uh, we see that one has p x y z is equal to zero for all x y z belonging to this set, and uh, uh, but the coefficient of x bar n y bar n z bar n p x y z is minus a zero 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 by b zero zero zero, which is non-zero since we have assumed that the plane doesn't include the point zero zero zero. So uh, so if we go back to the definition of a, then we have c v c that this a zero 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 cannot be zero, right? Because zero doesn't lie in this plane. All right, so uh, and we see that if we, if this contradicts the uh, uh, the, the hypothesis that we had in conventional new strand charge because uh, we cannot have all the points in zero zero uh, zero this set to be zero, but still uh, the coefficient of a certain term is non zero. Right? So so this gives us a contradiction, and we we conclude that you, we cannot do the job with k less than three n planes, and we have a solution with k less than three n planes. So uh, k equals to three n planes. So so three n is the minimum long plane setting. Actually, this is more. Uh, this is actually related to the to another research, another research work by um, Professor Allen and uh, and Zoltan Freddy. So this is uh, this is called the pounds. And but however, I won't discuss this today because of some time constraints and also um, uh, because this talk is essentially on commercial new charts uh, and uh, and I also because. Uh, uh, because this required a, a discussion on this bound will require a more uh, details to be presented, which uh, unfortunately cannot be possible. All right, so um, now let's see some applications of uh, combinatorial notions as in, in additive combinatorics. So uh, this is one of my favorite things that I uh, ever learned. So, yeah, so the first one is uh, the famous Cauchy Dampu inequality, which was uh, proved 
by Davenport. So he published the proof, and he later realized that uh, Cauchy also gave us gave a uh, proof of it uh, much before. So he had a he had written a, a an, an article uh, with giving all the time details and stuff, and where he mentions how he realized why, how Cauchy did it much before him. So, but they worked it out independently, and now and, and nowadays this is known as um, Cauchy Davenport inequality. This is a famous literature that people use. So it says that if P is a prime number, and if A and B are subsets of the field ZP, this P uh, this P uh, in the model of P integers then uh, the sum set a plus b so here a plus b is just a set of all numbers alpha plus beta where alpha is in a and beta is in b uh, that's uh, the, the this set has size at least in the as large as minimum of uh, p and uh, size of a plus size of b minus one and um, uh, there are two parts actually the proof can be done so if uh, size of a plus size of b is better than p then the claim follows from fusion of principle um, it's easy to show because uh, if, if in that case you just consider the sets, um, uh, suppose you have a plus b is less than this, so you consider a, a some less than p, suppose you as have a plus b is less than p, the size of a plus b is less than p, then you consider the some, uh, some element c, which is not in a plus b but in zp, then you consider the sets c minus a and b by pigeonal principle, uh, and we have uh, cardinality of c minus a plus cardinality of b is greater than p because of this condition. And uh, by pigeonal principle, uh, we see that this um, uh, they must have some uh, they must intersect and hence contradiction. Otherwise, uh, the more interesting case is if uh, cardinality of a plus cardinality of b is uh, is less than or equal to p. Uh, in that case, you see that uh, we can take any uh, we we take any s subset of this ZP with uh, cardinality of s equals to cardinality of a plus cardinality of b minus two. Uh, and we would show that there exists uh, a and a b belonging to this a cross a, I mean this this uh, a belonging to a and small b belonging to b such that uh, a plus b is not in s. So that would be enough for our purpose. So we consider this polynomial f a b defined by a product over all c in s a plus b minus c, and we see that the coefficient of a to the power cardinal of a minus one times cardinal b b to the power cardinal b minus one. Is just uh, by using this uh, by using straightforward calculation. It's straightforward. I think it's uh, a multinomial. Uh, it's related to multinomial theorem, but uh, I am not sure what the, this result is called. But yeah, but it's just straightforward calculation. So you see that it's it it it, it turns out to be cardinal of a plus cardinal of b minus two. Choose cardinal of a minus one, and that's not congruent to zero mod p. So the claim follows. Right. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next thing. So the next uh, uh, application of it is uh, actually a 30 years old conjecture, um, which goes by the name of Edish Helbon conjecture. Uh, it was proved by uh, Da Silva uh, uh, early before. Uh, so the first proof was given by Da Silva, uh, but uh, the, I think the uh, but the proof actually involved a lot of um, uh, algebraic uh, algebraic analysis. So. I mean, not algebra analysis. It, it, it involved a lot of um, studying a lot of algebra. Um, um, I mean, algebraic things. So, um, uh, analyzing algebraic structures. So, um, so the proof was overly complicated. But uh, here's one uh, nice proof which uh, was found by Professor Aaron. So, um, uh, it's it's using this number neutral answer. So, uh, we consider the uh, for we see first of all that if the size of a is greater than the p plus three by two, then the claim follows from principle uh, in, the sim in a similar way as we did for the Cauchy Davenport uh, inequality. Otherwise, uh, you take any set S, which is a subset of ZP uh, with uh, S, uh, size of S equals to 2, twice size of A minus 4. And you consider that uh, you consider F X, defining a polynomial FXY to be FXY uh, X minus Y times product over Z belonging to S, X plus Y minus Z. Uh, then the coefficient of x to the power a cardinal of a minus one times uh, y to the cardinal of a minus two uh, is just um, twice uh, cardinal of a minus four to cardinal of a minus two times twice cardinal of a minus four to, uh, times cardinal of a min uh, minus three, and uh, this can be re uh, rewritten as cardinal of a uh, in this way. Uh, it's easy to see that since if p is a prime number, so uh, and we have assumed p uh, cardinal of a 
to be less than p plus three by two in this case. So, so the none of p cannot divide any of this. Uh, two things, and so um, so we see that uh, that this their product is not is not divisible by p because p is a prime. So so we get the claim, uh, get the result that we want. Okay. All right. So now I'll move on to some of present a few extensions of this um, of this result um, of 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 the new So um, so this will uh, take up the rest of the. Uh, this will be present in the rest of the talk. So. Uh, all right, so we begin with Lagrange interpolation, which is a fairly well known result. So, I but still I've written it for completeness. So, suppose f is a field and we have x1 to xn be n distinct elements in this field, and suppose y1 to yn be uh, further in other distinct elements in this field, which may not uh, be distinct from the which may not be distinct among themselves. So, we may have yi equals to yj for i not equals to j, but uh, xi are distinct. And uh, then there is a unique polynomial f of degree uh, over f uh, having degree less than equals to n minus one, which satisfies this condition that f of xi equals to yi for all i. Um, and furthermore, this polynomial can be expressed in this way. Uh, it's easy to see that this polynomial works and uniqueness follows from, uh, um, because you otherwise you consider two different polynomials having the same, satisfying this condition, then you just take the difference and, uh, I mean, that will be a polynomial vanishing everywhere on this over this n minus n point, but um, uh, vanishing everywhere over this n points, but having degree less than equals to n minus one, that's not possible. All right, so um, uh, now uh, there's one result uh, you'll need, uh, which is goes by the name uh, Dyson's identity. And uh, this was actually um, uh, uh, proposed by Dyson, Freeman Dyson, uh, in context of statistical physics. Um, uh, and uh, he hypothesized this result, but he didn't prove it. Uh, a very, a very detailed and very uh, complete, uh, a slightly completed proof was given by, um, uh, given uh, and unpublished um, by someone. Um, but, um, but uh, during that time, uh, which Dyson later on cited also. But uh, one, the proof that's nowadays and a very nice and interesting proof was given by Good. There was a mathematician Good. Uh, who gave very nice proof, and his proof was actually was was you, but just based on a simple application of Lagrange interpolation. So uh, if we uh, we see that if we consider the the constant polynomial f identically equals to one, and if we use Lagrange interpolation on this polynomial at the point zero, uh, then we get this in uh, this identity, and uh, then. Once we have this, we can use multinomial theorem to um, to prove uh, Dyson's identity. Um, so I just I'll just not go into details of how proving this Dyson's identity, but uh, but because this re the the result is important, not the proof uh, for for our purpose. Uh, this is just given because we I will need this in a, in a, in a, in, a, in solving a a, a later uh, thing uh, you know in presentation. So um, the, it says that suppose we have a natural number n. And we have uh, any tuple a1 to a n of non-negative integers. And we consider this Lorentz polynomial uh, dx1 to xn uh, and parameterized by this uh, uh, tuple of integers, uh, which is defined by dx1 to xn. Uh, sorry. Uh, so which is defined by this dx1 to xn, a1 to a n is this product i1 less than equals to i, that goes to j, less than equals to n, um, uh, 1 minus xi by xj to the power ai. Uh, then the Dyson's identity says that this the poly this polynomial has a constant term uh, which with has a with the, the constant term is just a1 plus a2 plus to a n factorial by a1 factorial times a2 factorial times a n factorial and uh, and this uh, so the co by constant term I mean the terms that are free of any of this indeterminates and there's one interesting remark I would like to say yes that um, I later on found out that in one of the uh, so in uh, so some of you people may, might be aware of this that in Ecole Normale Superior there is a university it's a university very highly reputed university in France so they have this system of 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 by of oral exams so this their, their students have to give oral exams uh, it's all slightly similar to uh, to what happens in Princeton um, uh, graduate generals so some uh, which is which might be more you may, might be more acquainted with it. So uh, a similar uh, thing happens there, but uh, the thing that happens there is that instead they are not uh, they are the so the questions that are framed in such a way that they don't require much writing on the board and they have to just give it in 
form of a uh, oral exam. So uh, a very a, a slightly um, I mean, a strange but uh, interesting thing was that uh, this problem, this proving this result was actually asked in uh, one of the oral exams. So the so the the student was expected to to find out this to do these computations in mind and um, report the what the constant what the identity uh, and and come up with this result. Uh, and that actually, and when I found this problem, it seemed a very bit weird to me. So I tried to do that, and it all. And the and the interesting thing is that this result can actually be proved using induction uh, on n. So so that gives another proof. That gives us another proof of of, of license identity, which um, arises using Lagrange interpolation. Uh, it's a bit um, uh, tricky if we don't know uh, if we don't know what happens for n for small values of n. But once we see for small values of n, the Thing how we use induction becomes clear, uh, but yeah, again, I'll not digress into this uh, thing now. All right, so now let's come to the big grand feast, um, uh, which is um, about prime numbers. So, uh, so here is this problem. Uh, suppose we, it's it's worded in terms in a, in in a, in, a, in a folklore form. So suppose we are who wants to invite n couples to have dinner with him. Uh, by sitting around the round table uh, in his dining hall, and uh, but let's suppose that we consider some hypothetical situation that there is a parrot when, uh, who initially uh, who at the time of placing the invitations the parrot has to pick each one number for each couple, and the and then whenever the guests arrive, the king must place the two spouses of that couple at a clockwise distance of that chosen number between them. So the the king and uh, knows all the numbers beforehand, and that's an important. So so here one thing uh, we should uh, we noted that the king knows all the di's beforehand. So it's not that each time a couple arrives and then a new and then a uh, number is given to the king for um, for for placing the guest apart. All right, um, all right. So now the question is that uh, for what all values of n, uh, the king can ensure that no matter what numbers are chosen by the parrot. Uh, there would be a sitting arrangement for each of the two n plus one many people, uh, counting the king uh, himself. So there are two many many plus one many seats. So, and this has a very surprising answer, uh, which is that um, uh, the this works if and only if two uh, n plus one is a prime number. But let's uh, see this problem in a bit different form. So, um, see so we see that we have a sitting arrangement uh, is for such a sitting arrangement possible if and only if for any d1 to dn uh, in this set 1 to n, uh, the set z to n plus 1 admits an ordered partition of the form uh, z to n plus 1 is 0. Uh, so 0 indicates the position of the king, uh, a1 to a n. Uh, so this may be represent the position of the, of the, of the male members of the, of the pair couples. And then union b1 to bn, which may represent the you know, positions of the, of the female members in the, of, the, of, the, of the couples. And uh, such that where bi minus di is equal to di for uh, all i in one to n. All right. So so this problem can be rephrased in this way. In this way. So and uh, we would show that this works if and only if two n plus one is a prime number. Uh, quite surprising. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so um, so we in in fact we have this theorem more precisely we have this theorem that uh, if n is a natural number, then for any d one to d n. Uh, belonging to 1 to n, uh, we can partition the set z to n plus 1 as z to n plus 1 is 0 union a1 to a n, union b1 to pn, uh, and we're satisfying this condition that bi minus ai is di for all i in 1 to n. And uh, this happens if and only if 2 n plus 1 is a prime number. All right. So um, the, we'll split the proof into two parts. The first part is where we show that if two n plus one is not a prime number, then uh, then there are values of distances for which such a seating arrangement is not possible. And another way, another part is that if two n plus one is a prime number, then we would show that no matter what distances are specified by the parrot, the king can ensure a seat to all the guests obeying the given restrictions. Okay. So first part, let's consider the case when two n plus one is not a prime number. Uh, then we know that there exists a divisor k of uh, of two uh, n plus one, which satisfies this condition that one is less than k is less than two n plus one. And uh, now uh, suppose we choose all the distances to be k. Right? Uh, we would show that for such a uh, uh, such a choice, the the sitting arrangement of the mentioned kind is not possible. 
suppose the um, seating arrangement is such as seating arrangement actually is possible then you see that the two individuals in any pair must be seated on chairs uh, whose labels are have the same residue modulo k right because uh, they are just differ by a distance k uh, thus for each b uh, belonging to this set 0 to k minus 1 so uh, sorry there is a typo this should be k minus 1 there must be an even number of seats whose labels have residue modulo k, uh, modulo b, uh, residue b modulo k, right? Um, however, we see that the number of chairs with labels uh, leaving residue zero modulo k and those with labels uh, leaving residue one modulo k uh, differ by one because the king is fixed at one. So these numbers differ by one. So a contradiction. So we see that in such a case, we do not have a um, seating arrangement possible. All right, so the next thing is the more interesting part is when two n plus one is a prime number. Okay, so suppose two n plus one is a prime number, then uh, z we consider this polynomial uh, f over z two n plus one uh, to be defined by f x one to x n is just product of i not equals to j x i minus x j x i minus x j minus d j uh, x i plus d i minus x j and x i plus d i minus x j minus d j. And this polynomial is, is actually uh, easy to guess what polynomial we should be working with because if we consider um, that x i to be the position of the of the female members of the of the couples, then this uh, then this is non-zero. This polynomial is non-zero. Some uh, a certain term of this polynomial is non-zero essentially means that x i and the, the i th female member and the j th female members are placed in different positions. This essentially means that the j uh, the ith female member and the j th male member, because that's placed at a distance of dj from the female member, they are placed in different locations. Similarly, this is the ith male and the j th female are placed in different seats. And this is the uh, two ith male and j th males are placed on the different seats. So, so this is natural that this we should be working with this polynomial. And, uh, and so it will be sufficient to show that there exists some x1 to xn in this z2 n plus one similar as zero, such that if x1 to xn is non-zero. Um, and so now it's easy to see that this, uh, the degree of this polynomial is, uh, is, 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 is uh, four times n choose two, uh, because in, from each we are just, um, each term uh, just contributes to four factors of xi, right? So, so there are n, this which is n times n two n minus two. So the term, uh, mu x1 xn is x1 to the power 2n minus 2 times uh, so on to xn to the power 2 min minus 2 is a term in this polynomial um, and, uh, and it has the same degree as polynomial f itself. Uh, so by considering the maximum degree, we just remove, so that is we just remove the lower degree terms from there and we consider what remains. Uh, we see that the coefficient of uh, mu uh, um, x1 to xn in in, in f x1 to xn is the, just a constant term of the Lorentz polynomial uh, product i naught goes to j 1 minus xi by xj square uh, when because we just divide them and we see we get this um and then thanks to uh, and then thanks to dyson's identity it follows that uh, that the term mu x1 to xn uh, appears with a coefficient of 2n factorial times 2 to the power n uh, if we just uh, go back to to dyson's dyson's uh, identity then uh, uh, um, so, so we see that the coefficient is just a1 to a n plus a n factorial by this product. So here the a n's are just two, uh, two. So, so we have this thing. All right, and uh, we see that, and and uh, and uh, and and uh, and it's easy to see that 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 since two n plus one is a is a is a prime number. So nothing before two n plus one. Uh, so every every integer that is smaller, every positive integer is smaller than two n plus one. Is uh, is co prime to two n plus one, so when and when we are taking when we are just multiplying when we are forming this product we are just multiplying in the numerator just multiplying the numbers that are less than two n plus one, so we cannot uh, come up with anything that's not congruent to uh, to, to to zero, um, we cannot we we will uh, we cannot come up with a with a quantity that is divisible by two n plus one so uh, so this term is non uh, is leaves a non zero remainder when divided by two n plus one. So it is a non-zero element of this field, and now by the application by, by an application of commutative Nunez-Lanzas, it follows that um, that we have that this thing is uh, is just uh, uh, that 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 this polynomial does not vanish at some point in this field, and we are just excluding zero because the zero chair denotes um, the presence of of uh, of the of the king himself, right? 
so um, all so that's uh, the entire thing that i wanted to present um and uh, yeah so here is a thank you from um from all of us to professor alon and also to gocc for giving me this opportunity to present at this wonderful uh, event and and especially because of to uh, giving me this permission to present at this wonderful event of professor alon's birthday so yeah it's a big honor so thank you Let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Are there any questions? Could you go back a slide? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this so, one? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I was just making sure I was following the argument that we're getting the constant term of the Laurent polynomial, because uh -huh. we're talking about maximum degree terms, that means we're never choosing any of the Ds, Is, or D, Dj's from our right. products. So we just have Xi minus Xj to the fourth, effectively. Right. And then you divide right. through by the Xj's and you get these terms Yes, so these are the terms that uh, that survive and I mean that contribute to the to the highest uh, degree. I mean to this, uh, right? I mean these are the terms that contribute to the to the degree of this polynomial. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, the constant terms only survive because uh, the other ones may, will be just taken care of. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank uh, you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Can you tell anything about the proof of combinatorial Nullstellensatz? Uh, yes, so the proof I deliberately didn't put it here. Uh, it's essentially um, um, uh, so. So, the, uh, so uh, I started with this result, uh, but instead, combinatorial Nullstellensatz can be contrasted with Hilbert's Nullstellensatz uh, in a more appropriate way. So, um, so this. So, although the, in we see that this is a sort of a motivation for uh, this result, but uh, but it's more uh, effective to if you if you contrast the commercial new strands with Hilbert's new strands. So um, uh, yeah, so 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 a proof based on that can be uh, discussed. I mean, not based on Hilbert's new strands, but the uh, idea uh, can be uh, the the main idea from that can be used to mold it into a proof. And there's another thing that I uh, that that's uh, since you asked about this, so um, so there's another thing that I would like to say. Yes, that's about uh, when I discuss about these extensions, so uh, I just a second, yeah. So I discuss about Lagrange interpolation, and recent and, uh, and not not recently, but a few years back, uh, Professor Peter Petrov and uh, Kara, Professor Roman Karasev and a few others worked out a form, uh, 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 worked out a, an extended version of of commutative new uh, which actually uh, uh, using I mean, which gives the nth the coefficient of the nth term of the of the of, of a certain uh, degree of, uh, I mean, the coefficient of a certain term in this polynomial. So, um, yeah, so so there's one another proof of it using um, that. And then uh, using uh, that version of the commutator new transfers, one can prove Dyson's identity also. So that gives us another way of proving that. Uh, uh, I yeah. hope I can... uh, hi, I'm wondering if, if, if you could put in the chat uh, a pointer to uh, proofs of the... Uh... Combinatorial uh -huh. null stellar sets. Ah, uh, so uh, everything here is more or less. Everything here is taken from the. I mean, uh, from Professor Alon's paper. So, um, uh, so yeah, uh, I can I can give the link. Um, oh, I have good. To, Thank you. I don't have that in my. Uh, I I have, don't have that copied. So, I need to search and give the link. Uh, otherwise, there's uh, this thing that um uh, that um, I uh, a few years back I wrote one document. On commutator new transfers, which was actually written in uh, in partial, uh, uh, I mean, I needed that for um, for applying to a certain uh, university, so uh, to Saint Joseph State University, um, and uh, so I I wrote that document, uh, which has everything. So this entire presentation was built uh, based on that. So it has the proofs, it has the described, uh, it has detailed explanations of everything, and uh, all the things. So uh, yeah, except for this result, this polynomial, this IMO problem. I just did this morning because uh, 
I I wanted to discuss it. So, yeah, so I can so, give you so the you're link talking, to that. So you're talking the the paper is the is the one you showed a picture of. Uh, no, that's a different height. paper. Uh, that's a different paper. Oh. That's a paper on on Alon Fuer the bounds. So that's a different paper. Um, oh, okay. uh, I I'll give you the link. Uh, I if you think I need to stop sharing and then I can uh, go and fetch the link and put it in the chat. You, okay, you can do that a little bit later. First, I want to ask: Is are there some other questions from the audience? Uh, so, uh, uh, so Stephen, uh, since you asked about the proof of polynomial inference, so, um, uh, so actually, the, um, it's it's a bit uh, difficult to, to uh, explain the proof in in, in just words. Uh, but since I, uh, if I would have uh, had a slide on it, I could have elaborated on it. But uh, yeah, so uh, as I said, you, I think uh, uh, it's it's better that uh, that uh, the I mean, you can contrast the proof with uh, the result with Hubert's answers. Like, so that gives us a okay. starting. Thank you. Um, maybe I have one more question. You were talking a little bit about some inequalities, like here the Cushy Devonport inequality. Uh -huh. How tight? Yeah. How tight are those inequalities? So are there cases when we get equality uh, and yes. equalities in uh, both sense with p and a plus b minus one? Right. So um, uh, if we have a and a, so so ideally in additive combinatorics, it's uh, so it's um, uh, so. So, like, just like how we make guesses in case of uh, when we are working with something that uh, when this equality will achieved or not in additive combinatorics, uh, I heard this thing from Professor Terence Tav once. So he yeah, he had he gave this quote while he was speaking that uh, whenever you have to maximize something or minimize some set or some size of a of a some set, you think our progressions, and this can be and this this thinking of progressions this this uh, this uh, this, uh, this practice can be contrasted with how you think about. Um, about exponential functions when you are trying to maximize some sort of um, uh, stabilize some sort of a Fourier transform. So, uh, so, so in K when and and in B, so when you have suppose A and B are progressions, then you see that most of the terms get actually nullified because I mean, uh, because the first and the fourth, third, the sum of the first and the fourth term of a progression, uh, sum of the first and third term of a progression is same as twice the second term of the progression. So. A lot of terms get are become actually redundant. So I mean, lot of sums in this set, because terms in this sum set becomes redundant. So you have this thing, uh, this equality achieved when uh, E and B are progressions, and it's easy. And and also I would like to point it out that if P is not a prime number, then this thing that it doesn't hold. Then uh, this equality doesn't hold. And one small example is just uh, if you take P equals to four, say, so that's not a prime number. So I'm giving an example of that case. Say if you take p equals to four and uh, and a and b to be one three, then you see that uh, in that case uh, this thing uh, you have a plus b is just two, um, but uh, but p a minimum of this is uh, three, so we don't have any inequality in that case. And uh, as you as I said, uh, in case of progressions, this uh, this thing will be achieved. Okay, thank you. If there are no further questions, then let's thank our speaker again. Yeah. And I think we can stop the recording now.